right, everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over, um, this is, I think, going to be very interesting. We'll see. Uh, this is a process video, and what we're doing is analyzing how I come up with my lineup for the uh, last round of the live final qualifier uh, in the League of Legends uh, streets. Um, just a little bit of history, you know, throughout the course of the year, they ran satellites and each winner got a $2,000 seat into this thing. Um, and it got down to 200 people to start the, the qualifying process. And there's two rounds before the live final. And, and the first round uh, went from 200 down to 70 and or 75. And I made it through that um, with a pretty, pretty neat little lineup, actually. One of these days, I'll go over that. Uh, anyway, now we're down in the nitty gritty and we have to get from 70 or 75, I forget, down to 10. Um, the, the, whoever comes in the top 10 gets a live final seat uh, in Atlanta at the end of next month at the world's finals. So the idea is that you have to come in in the top 10. It doesn't matter whether you get first, but whatever. So the way they made the slate, again, that I don't think they thought about this at all, but they they gave us a two day slate, um, with, for the uh, involving the EU Masters and the EU Masters teams are are the worst of them all. Um, so they're 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 not going to get too much into this, but they're they're deciding who makes this live final based on a two game slate over two days, with the less project projectable and the less known teams in the entire League of Legends streets. But you know what? I was speaking to Will, uh, not what I was speaking to him. I, I messaged in the uh, in the Sabres and Discord and Will. Patterson, who's literally genius, says, just don't think about it that much. And I said, the good thing is I don't, I don't think much anyway, so it doesn't make a difference. I'm just treating this like anything else. But what's interesting about this slate, and we're going to start talking about how to build the lineup, is, is, the, is the construct of these two games. So the game on tomorrow, and by the way, it is, yeah, everything locks at 11 today. So, you know, we, no, nobody can change anything. And I'm not going to release this until the slate locks as well. Um, the, the, the second game involves a seven to six, six to one favorite, that being LDLC. Um, and the first game is basically a pick. -up. So that's creates a, a very, you know, simplistic dynamic, right? I mean, the first question you want to ask and the way I asked is, do I want to lock in this LDLC? Um, or do I want to go for the throat right off the bat and fade them? Now, again, what are we trying to accomplish here? We're trying to come in the top 10. And here's the problem. If I go for the, the fade and I play Dusty, it's possible that they win and I still don't make it, right? Like if I, if I, if I play Dusty, and get the wrong side of the GWX7 game, it's possible that I don't come in the top 10, depending on how it goes. But think about this. So, so if I'm playing Dusty, they're basically, what, six to one, or maybe five to one or something like that to win. So 20% of the time they're going to win. And then, 50% of those times, I'm going to have the right team here. So 10% of the time, that's going to come in. Is that enough? I mean, I, I keep going back and forth with that. I mean, that is certainly the easiest way to approach this, right? Is to play a four man from GW or X seven and then play a three man with dusty. And, and roll with it. But then the other way thing I think about is maybe I should just play a four man with dusty. And then a three man with one of these two teams 
for for the possible variation where maybe Dusty wins and whoever I pick from the GW X7 team loses, I still might get there. So those variations are less than 10, are more than 10% of the time. So I thought about that and I think about that. And I came to the conclusion that I was not going to do that. That what I was going to do was I was going to eat the LDLC chalk and pick my team from the GWX7. And the problem here, when you do it this way, is, is since you're taking the chalkier builds, you also really have to get not only the team right, but you're probably going to have to get the players right, or at least really close. Okay, so so the, the thing is, is no matter which of these approaches you take, you're going to have to make some kind of assessment of what to do in this game, right? So that that's the that's the thing that I was that I was really focused in on is is this first game, and the good thing is it's basically a pick 'em game. A GW started off as a 140, I think it's come down to 115, so it is basically a pick 'em game. And you just have to pick one. So essentially what I did was first I thought of is either team going to be particularly high owned. And based on my research, based on looking at, at, at the numbers, based on looking at ownership projections, based on all this stuff, I think it's possible that GW is slightly more owned, but not by a lot. Um, so I was going to just, see if if my man if dfs chan who's you know he does all the content for my site um had a strong opinion and if he did have a you know have an opinion on this which team i mean far be it for me to to um to dispute that now again chan it doesn't if they lose whoever who gave me it doesn't matter i don't care you know what i mean that's better than i was going to do on my own so so that's the first thing I was going to do is I was going to check with Chan what his opinion was on the game. And then I was going to look at what other kind of content that I kind of follow. And I have to bring another site into this. And that's uh, Fantasy Penta. Fantasy Penta is probably one of the only sites that dedicated almost exclusively to um, to League of Legends. They do have uh, some other things also. But these guys are super sharp. And these guys are really, really good. So, And I subscribe to them. I pay. And they're not paying me to say this right now. This is like my process. And so what I did was I looked at several parts of their site. I did look at their projections, but this was the main thing I looked at. They have this thing called the kill sheet that gives a little write-up on each game and also some statistics. And it looks as though it's close, right? Um I mean, I just read their, read their, I read their, read their, their, their report, and they're saying that GW might be the most popular underdog. Um, but the the sense I got was that X Seven might be the better team, you know, because like he says, I have a hard time deciding if GW has the taste to take down X Seven, right? And when he says, I think it's possible, it seems as though he thinks that GW should be more of an underdog, which is, which, and then when he even said. Um, GW will be most popular underdog on the slate. And, and to me, I was like, this, I thought they were favored. So this is kind of like, this is really important. Um, but then I, and they're, you know, they're recommending 65, 35 in, 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 in large field tournaments or whatever it is. Um, and then really important is this other stuff. Because this is just one person's opinion, which is fine but they're talking about which guys you're going to want to play in these matchups. So if you it says for X seven, you want to play uh, mid uh, uh, sup and, and, and Attila, right. Um, ADC and then GW uh, uh, jungle uh, mid and, and, and ADC, right. The other thing I looked at was the kill percentage in wins for all of these players. And before I get into what Chan was talking about, I mean, this is, a couple of things kind of stood out to me was that Melanick had a much higher kill percentage uh, in wins for his team than Chasey did in his. 
And more to the point, I mean, you look at the LDLC matchup. The LDLC matchup, you have Ragnar, and this is what I end up taking, right? He only has 50% kill percentage. So Melanick, if I play GW, I mean, would probably be a really good play in the top position, okay? Um, and I haven't built anything yet. But this is what I'm I kind of like thinking about as I go through this. And then they say, uh, Shezalad, how do you pronounce that? Uh, Shekalad, carry the team, he's mid, whatever it is. Um, so as far as like like content, right? This is the stuff that I'm kind of thinking about. And then, then I'll go to there. They have a great Discord channel, um, which I don't know if I should show on here, but they have a good Discord channel. They're just they're just really, really super sharp. They also have um they have projections here as well. And I use these to kind of make my aggregates, but but for this particular slate, I didn't think it was as important because what they do, and rightly so, right, is to is to calculate what their what the projection is in a win, right? But but if you think if you look at it, um, I think that the LDC guys are going to be a little under projected here because I think the LDC guys are going to be more likely to sweep than the um, than anybody from this other game. So I wouldn't really use the projections for this particular contest in this, but these guys are really really good with their projections as well. So that's my one tout for for. For for fantasy penta, they're really really good, and I was you know, I use them, and I use them a lot, um, to uh, to help help my direction, you know. Um, so then I went back to Chan and I asked him what he thought of me, and he gave me a lot of reasons why he liked uh, GW. Um, and I mean I can go through all of them, but suffice to say, I mean he's he he convinced me, right. Uh, uh, the, the way that their ADC and, and jungler dominated the the X could dominate the X seven uh, X seven is one loss they got their ADC and jungle dominated uh, whatever it is um, and so I was torn I didn't know exactly which way to go as far as what team to play but I just decided that it was going to GBGW okay, and that was it um, so now that I decided what the mix was going to be LDC GW. And I usually don't do it this way, but then I went back and built and I used Saber Sim to run my line. So, so what I did was first thing I did was I uploaded uh, my projections and my projections are basically a weighted aggregate of all the industry projections that I can find, which I've also back tested to some degree for accuracy. Now, again, I don't need to really share who's the best and who's this and the other, but face, suffice to say, I think I have a good um, good formula and algorithm to 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 come up with a good um, good projection that I, that's been really working for me. How about that? Uh, the one thing I wasn't able to get is a lot of captain ownership, which is a little annoying. But so when we build lineups, what are we looking for, right? Remember, we're, we're on the chalkier build. So what you'd like to do is find a lineup that projects well that has a chance to be somewhat unique, okay? Um, you, you don't want to be in a 20-way tie with the same lineup unless it completely stands out, and there's just nothing that's going to stand out like that. But maybe, but we'll just take a look. So that's the goal in pretty much all DFS, but specifically GPPs and something like this where you need to come in the top 15% or so. I mean, you don't need to win, so it's not as top-heavy as – Real big GPPs, but it's definitely more aggressive than cash. So what I do is I'll upload, let's just do it again, right? So we'll upload my projections. This is the way I do it into, uh, into SaberSim. And SaberSim, they're tremendous. I <laughs> think they are the optimizer I use most of the time. Actually, let's do it again. Hold on, let's squeeze up again. Um, so all the projections are in here, along with with, with ownerships. Okay, um, and let's um, and let's just run them. What I'm going to do is is first I'm going to do is I'm going to run say fifty lineups. Okay, we're going to give a pool of three hundred. So we're actually going to build three hundred lineups, and that's the way Saberson works. They'll build you three hundred from which you can derive like your favorite you know, X amount, like 20, 30, 40, 50, 
And then when you make changes, it'll automatically populate that, okay? Now, after this builds, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna X out, and that's why I built 300, right? I wanna X out the lineups that have uh, GW, uh, excuse me, that have um, uh, the other team, uh, X7 in there. Um, Cause so I wanna see what I'm looking at. Now, as this is building, I, I did wanna throw one other thing, which is a sort of a little bit of a benefit of, of playing the way I did. Um, if I do get a good start out of the GW, I mean, it's certainly possible. Um, I mean, if they get if they put in a good result today, it's very possible I could I could I could use sports betting to hedge against LDLC, you know, and 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 play some 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 Dusty uh, as well. The only thing is, I really think Dusty is going to be like zero percent off. Um, um, and you know, every, I'll tell you every single time that I, what you call it, that I say that, I just I want more and more to just change my mind completely, right? <laughs> and just play Dusty alongside of G seven or a GW, and just kind of be done with it. And I wonder if by the end of this, it's like ten thirty five right now. And again, I'm not going to post this until 11, obviously. I mean, I, for obvious reasons. But I wonder if at the very end, I just do that and play Dusty alongside of G7. Just, and then, and then if G7 wins today, just sit there and just root for an LDLC win, just really literally takes down the, takes it down with no problems. I don't think that's what I'm going to do. Now, again, I did think about other variations. I thought about playing almost all the LDLC with kind of one one-off from Dusty. And that's how I got into this thing in the first place, with kind of a tactical pivot like that. All right, so let's look at this. So here are the lineups, all of them. Uh, and the first thing I want to do is I want to X out the X7. Okay, so we out, X out X7. Boom. And by the way, I, I almost definitely will bet be betting X7 today, okay, um, in the sports book. Um, okay, so now we have all these lineups together. And the first thing I'll do, I, in this particular case, I want to rank them by projection, by projected score. Um, but what I want to do is I only want the, the four threes today. Do I only want the four threes? Hang on a second here, Tiger. I want to see, maybe I don't, hold on. Do I at the very end of this want to, hold on, at the very end of this, is it possible that I just want to, play something like this? And play no because you know what whoever wins this they're just gonna have a big edge on it. yeah I'm not, I don't need that all right so let's 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 get rid of the four twos um and let's get rid of the x sevens and see what we're working with so what I'm looking for again is a good projection that might be low owned. I'm not low owned that yeah that might be somewhat unique. First, let's look at the projections here. And this is where we're starting, right? So they're ranging from anywhere from 865 down to, is there any big drop off that I'm seeing? 856, 855, 855, 854, 854, 851, 850, 850, 850, 850, 850, 850, 850, 850, 850, 850, 850, 850, 850, 850, 850, 850, 850, 850, 850, 850, 850, 850, 850, 850, somewhat different right and the first thing that would make one lineup seem different than another would be salary right so if there's one of these that leaves more money on the table i'm more inclined to do that see this is 49.5 this one is 49.3 this one is 49.1 this is 49.5 this is 49.3 this is 49.5 it's 49.5 so they're all somewhat similar right and there's another 49.1 
So they're all somewhat similar. Um, um, now, the other thing is that we're going to go back to what we what we talked about with these um, with these uh, notes, right? And the the stats that we saw, and the thing that we noticed again was that Melanick was kind of like an overweighted top, you know, relative to the rest of the field. So I think what I'd like to do is play the lineup with Melanick in the top position. Okay. And so why don't we do that? Let's then, and this is how we're doing this. Now what we'll do is we're going to lock in Melanick in the top position. Actually, you know what we could do? We could just quit on this. Boom. So these are all of the Melanick, Melanick liners. All right, so this is a good start. Okay. Um. And then the other thing, again, because I would like to, and the key is to not only get GW right as a team, but to get them right with respect to um, which guys are, are the best performers. So again, we we're looking at, at, at a couple of things. First, Chan was saying that they have a pretty good jungler and an ADC. And we also have the, the, the kill sheet guys saying that you have the jungle and the um and and the mid, okay, usually carry their teams. So there's a couple of ways you could do this. According along with Melanick, I could either add Akabane or Shekelad or both. Now, here is the problem with adding them both. When you add them both, now you have three guys. From the you know those the, the the you know the you know those higher scoring positions I guess I mean from positions, and then you have LDLC who is rating to maybe get a sweep, you know. Um, so you're giving up, you know. You're getting if you use all three of those like Melanick and um, Shesnak, whatever his name is. And uh, and the jungler, then you really are taking away, um, you really are taking away. Well, you can use them all three, right? Because they we need the ADC, the jungler, and the ADC, the jungler, and the mid are the guys we want to play. But we already identified the top as the guy we want to do also. So. I think what we want to do is play Melanick with one of those two. And maybe the one that's that 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 the LDLC guys isn't going to swamp. You know what I mean? In the next one. So maybe what we're supposed to do is play the mid from uh from GW. Okay. So for me, okay, so this is what we're doing. So it's either going to be the mid from GW, right? Or if it's the mid from GW, that's the Shesniak, whatever. Or then we get the then we get to play. Then we could play double ADC. Or again, we put GW in the team. You know, and that's that's an interesting question. You know, do do you do you play too many of these position players for GW, and you give up? I mean, you you you're really going to be anti-sweating LDLC at, 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 to to some degree. So let's take a look at some of these lines with with Melanick and see if any of them, first of all, have a kind of a, a good uh, salary. So this one's forty nine one. This is actually pretty interesting. So what does this do for us? This gives us a good salary. In other words, it leaves money on the table. This one also gives us one of the guys we're looking at, the mid. And it's also going to give us... The jungler from LDOC is going to be really strong. 
And it gets us a little bit different because I think this double mid build is not going to be the most popular. So this is really interesting. I think this is kind of the top option here. So again, so what do we have? We have the good jungler from LDLC, which is good. Uh, we do have the ADC um, from LDLC, which is also good. We don't have them in the captain, which is fine. This might be a little different to put the go double mid. And the good thing is the mid for um, for GW is one of the guys that the guys I respect say is going to help carry their team. We put G game ward in the in the in the flex <laughs> in the team, and I think that's going to be the leader for now. But let's just kind of go down and see what else is within these. You know, I want I want a projection that's close. You know, I want to just completely go off the wall here. I mean, I can't see any reason to get down to these 844 projections or certainly the 841 projection. Now we're talking about GW and the captain or something like that. So let's 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 do a double check. Let's double check and make sure that we that we know what we're doing here. Okay. So We have a four stack with LDLC. Where, which is the one I was doing? Where this? Where to go? Right. We have a four stack with LDLC, which is good. We have them in the position players, which is good because if they sweep, you know you're getting you're getting the you're, you're getting the, the the full bonuses out of the position players, which is worth a hell of a lot more than the full bonuses out of the the team, right? Um, you're also getting the benefit of, you are getting some, uh, you're getting the ADC with the sub, which is good. And you're getting a little different, I think, with the mid, um, with the double mid build. You get Yake, you get the top for GW. The only thing you're not getting that would, that, that, that fits our, um, our narrative here is that you're not getting either the jungler or the ADC from GW. But I think that's okay. I think that's going to be the way that we approach this. Is we're just going to hope that, you know, the one uh, the other thing again that Chan said was that 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 these two guys, UK and 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 the ADC for LDLC are two like superstars. So I can root for them to just pick up the slack and just freaking dominate. Okay. Um I think that I think that covers everything that I need from my lineup, right? I'm leaving 900 on the table, which is the most amount, you know, that that's available of these candidate lineups. The projection is about 10 points light, but that's fine. Um, and it, and it also, um, to some degree leverages the information that was at my disposal. I don't think I could ask for much more than that. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's put this in. So let's just, we're going to, this was, this is one of my, I don't want to see what this was because that comes in. I'm not again. Um, so what do we decide? So we're going to have Elka in the mid. We're going to have um, Melonic in the top. We're going to have Yike in the jungle. We're going to have Shezalad, Shekalad in the mid. Then we're going to have Exakick in the ADC. We're going to have Doss in the ADC, in the SUP, and then we are going to have Game Ward in the team. And that looks like good enough for me. Assign lineup, and away we go. So, again, this is not the way I always play. This is not, not the way I play GPPs at all, but I thought I would really talk through, since it's going to be just the one lineup, Everything that was going through my head when I made this. Now I do think the fishier, the fishier stand that I'm making is just making sure I played Melanick at the top. Um, but I think that's fine. Um, and obviously the double mid is going to be a little bit, a little bit different. The 900 salary is going to be a little bit, bit different. Um, and I think that might be enough. Now again, the way we judge this, we don't judge this by, by results. Right, we, that's not the way you judge this. This is the way we're going to judge this lineup because it projects within ten points of the other. 
if this lineup obviously is fully unique, it's a freaking enormous home run, right? Um, I think also if this lineup is duped less than hmm, less than five times, it's got to be a pretty damn home run. If this is due more than 10 times, it's a disaster. So that's the way we're going to judge this. And what I think I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pause this and then um, get back on there and see where ownership comes in to see if this is a disaster. No, you know, I'm not going to be able to see the dupes for until, until a while anyway. Um, I don't have the software to do it right away. So in any case, uh, that'll do it. 10 minutes to game time, hopefully. And it's a full two-day sweat. But, you know, the good thing is, is if game seven doesn't win, I'm not going to seven. If game war doesn't win, I'm not going to be in it. Uh, that'll do it. Good luck to everybody. Hope to see you guys in Atlanta. If not, I uh, hope you guys learned something from this.